everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel Kalanadi. Today I'm going to do a rather off the top of my head review of The Just City by Joe Walton. I heard uh, very glowing things about this book, in fact, things that I, I really hadn't heard about my real children and my hopes were really up. I just was getting this feeling like it was something that Joe Walton was personally more enthusiastic about. And that just makes me feel great about reading a book. The concept of The Just City is based on Plato's The Republic, which unfortunately I haven't read. I haven't read anything by Plato. I don't think that you absolutely have to read The Republic before you read this book. Walton does a fantastic job of working in the major details so that you understand. But I think that if you have actually read The Entire Republic, it would fill in a lot more and make you think even more about the experimental city in the story. In, in this world, very much like our own, the Greco-Roman gods like Athena and Apollo, and it's implied many other deities, do actually exist. They exist outside of time and they can travel through time. And the book opens with Apollo uh, being very upset that Daphne has refused his advances and prayed to become a tree rather than let him rape her. He's like, but we were just playing a game and the point is that I chase her and then I catch her and then we have sex. And that he's complaining to his sister, you know, why did she turn into a tree? Why wouldn't she rather be with me? And his sister's like, um, you don't, you don't understand this at all, do you? Like, she has a... She can, she can decide what happens to her own body. It's not a game to her. And he's like, no. Athena tells him that she is setting up a city that is going to be an experiment to prove whether Plato's The Republic could actually work. She wants to do it on the island of Calisti, uh, which is going to blow up by a volcano, thus giving rise to the myth of Atlantis, so that all evidence of this experiment will be destroyed eventually. But she wants to bring, uh, she wants to bring together a lot of brilliant minds from throughout all of time. People who pray to her that they wish that the Republic was real, and set the city up, and then bring a whole bunch of children there and raise them in the city according to the strictures that Plato sets forth in the Republic. And Apollo decides that he's going to join in this experiment as well, and he decides to be reborn in human form in order to become one of the children that go to the city. So to set up the city, Athena travels through time kind of to grab various adults who have read the, Epub the Republic and bring them to the city to set it up. So I think she brings together about 300 adults were called the masters and then after they have set up the city and um, formed a lot of committees to decide how they're actually going to implement the rules of the Republic they go throughout time and they buy uh, orphaned slave children and they bring the children to the island of the city as free citizens and raise them there and all the children are roughly 10 years old one of those is Apollo, and another is a young girl, a 10-year-old girl named Simea. And the story is told from three perspectives. You get the perspective of Maya, one of the adults, who is one of the masters and came to the city to set it up, and who now teaches the children. You have Simea's perspective. She is the one of the children that excels in this environment. You get to see from her perspective how the Just City is really supposed to work, how it can work. Um, and then you have Apollo's perspective, which is different. I mean, he's learning a lot of very valuable lessons about what it means to be human, about equal significance, about, you know, not being a sexist prick or whatever. Um, and he becomes very good friends with Samea. I think this book is relatively light on plot. It is really a thought experiment, you know, the process of building the city, implementing the Republic, and seeing what happens. I can't really describe why this book worked so well for me. I gave it five stars. Most good books are four stars to me, but what takes it to five stars is some sort of emotional click inside of me. I think probably, probably I was just so incredibly happy that the writing quality 
um, was better than the last Walton book that I read. I was, I was so afraid that I was going to have high expectations and that they wouldn't be met at all, and I, I was proved wrong about that, and that made me very happy, I think. And so I do want to quickly mention the one thing in this book that uh, took me by surprise a bit and made me a bit uncomfortable. This book does have a rape scene near the beginning. Nothing is graphic. And then there is another scene later on in which basically it becomes non-consensual sex during the act. I was struggling with that a little bit. Not so much that it happens, I completely can see why in the structure and framework of the story it's, just, it's gonna happen. They have no safeguards against it at all, they have no education about it, and most of the women involved in all this, like I said, they, they have not been told what to do, what to say, and they just kind of brush it off in a very odd way, which goes against my modern sensibilities. The, the, the rape at the beginning, the woman basically goes back to some of the other female masters and says, uh, wow, this guy that we all thought we really liked and who's really intelligent and is going to be teaching the children here just raped me and he doesn't think he raped me. And their response to that is not, oh my god, we have a problem here, he's a rapist. It's, we'll just spread the word to all the other women that maybe they shouldn't go off alone with him anywhere. The second instance that made me very uncomfortable is that in the Republic, I guess Plato's idea for procreation for, you know, keeping the city populated is that there should be these regular festivals of Hera where um, the boys and girls of the city, the, the inhabitants, should be paired off randomly with each other and then, you know, some of them get pregnant, some of them don't. But you don't get to choose. You are just randomly chosen to be with somebody, you're married for one day, you're expected to have sex, and if you have a kid, it is taken away from you and raised in common. And it makes it really awkward when you get randomly paired with, like, your best friend, that you have an extremely platonic relationship, and all of a sudden you're expected to have sex with each other, and then, like, not let it affect your relationship, or you get paired with somebody who you despise, or you get paired with somebody who, you know, doesn't treat you the way, especially if you're a woman, the way that you need to be treated. There's nothing in here about how children are educated about sex, or about consent, or anything. You know, pretty, you pretty much line up a bunch, of, like a thousand 16-year-olds, pair them all off, and then go say, okay, you don't know anything about sex, but you go just do it like bunny rabbits and make children. That is the most awkward, embarrassing, dumb idea. It's a really good thing that in this book multiple characters make comments about how Plato doesn't really understand humans. <laughs> I really liked this book. I pre-ordered the second book, The Philosopher Kings, when I was only like a third of the way through it. I was like, I'm going to love this. I'm going to love the next book. I'm going to love this entire series. Sometimes you just know. That is it for this review. Oh, so rambling. I'm going to have such fun editing this one. If you have read this book, or if you're currently reading it, or you want to read it, you want to talk about Joe Walton, please comment down below and let me know what you're thinking, and I will talk to you again in my next video. Bye! Bye.